Hey guys, today's video, we're going to be checking out the McFarlane Toys Rick and Morty build set. This is the Spaceship and Garage. It has 293 pieces. It's recommended for ages 14 and up and comes with two figures. Uh, you will not see a figure down below. I've already built this. Uh, two figures inside. You get yourself a regular Rick and regular Morty. Uh, spin around the back of the package. This is basically what it's going to look like. And I thought initially I was going to build this on camera. I'm kind of glad that I didn't. It was very involved. Got a little frustrated. Well, we'll look at the finished piece in a second. Other sets, however, to be built are the Discreet Assassin, which I have not picked up, along with the Ants in My Eyes Johnson Electronics. Still like to get those. We have, however, already looked at the You Can Run But You Can't Hide, the Smith Family Garage Rack, and just recently, just recently, we also had a look at the Evil Rick and Morty set as well. To check out more, you can head over to McFarlandBuilds.com. If you want to see some stuff that you can build, head, head over to McFarland Toys. Check that out. So there, in a nutshell, is the box. And here's the finished build. Uh, one thing you'll get is an instruction guide, obviously showing you how step-by-step step to go through and build this monstrosity. It is, yes, a little bit more of an extensive build. I started, I think, to be honest with you guys, I started building this on camera, and then I just realized the frustrations of building it, and some of the things just didn't match to the instruction guide, which is something... I won't spend a lot of time discussing, but colors did not match. Placement of where things went didn't necessarily match. So I just decided, finish the build, we'll go right back to it. So you get yourself the instruction guide, very meaty guide. And uh, luckily it's not, it was wrinkled and creased. So it made building it a little bit easier, a little bit easier. Let's have a look at the figures that we get included in the set. You get a regular Rick which I might add has extremely rubbery arms. They're like licorice. Is there any reason why these arms had to be so rubbery? Could they not have been just a, a dense, solid plastic? Uh, you also had to build Rick, uh, unlike the Morty that was already kind of assembled. Uh, poor Rick, you, uh, you had to actually put together. And uh, yeah, just, just a little frustrating, I have to admit. Uh, the head is also rubbery, not sure why. Uh, everything else is plastic, really technically excluding his jacket. Um, you can rotate the head. Again, this is what I'm talking about. Why Why does this have to be rubber? Uh, the arms rotate. Good luck. Ha <laughs> ha, good luck. It's not going to really happen because they're, well, somewhat you can still rotate the arms. Hands, waist, legs, feet down below. At least the feet aren't falling off. That's one plus. Uh, paint, unfortunately, on poor Rick's face. It's a little splotchy. I won't lie. It's just a little bit splotchy. Then you have Morty, which, unfortunately, I think suffered the worst. And again, this is plastic. Rick's is rubber. Don't you think that there should be some consistency between the... You know, the both figures should kind of have the same makeup, but strangely, no. Uh, Morty also has a whole bunch of just mess all over his sleeve. Uh, what's what's happening here? They also give you this front torso piece, which we've looked at before. Luckily, not nearly the gap that we had with the evil Rick and evil Morty. But even still, I don't know why this has to be a separate piece from the rest of the torso. You can even see where the color just doesn't match. Why does it have to necessarily be a new piece? Um, I get. I guess they were trying to use the same torso for all the figures, but really, it makes no sense to me why that had to be a separate piece. The face is uh, a little messy. I won't lie, a little on the messy side. Uh, I I don't mind the expression, kind of, but I kind of wish he had a more panicked Morty facial expression. It seems like we don't really get a lot of Mortys that are just panicking about stuff. So, yeah, you know, the, at least you get some cool figures. I kind of wish that they were just a little bit better though. Let's move those to the side. Uh, you get a whole bunch of different accessories, some of which that don't attach to the garage set, one of which being the interdimensional transporter gun, which looks actually quite cool. It looks good actually with the green on the front there, and the green on the top, and the red. You can take it and as best you can, you can fit it into Rick's hand, but because his hands are just rubber, I don't, again, don't, doesn't make any sense to me. 
I mean, he can hold it, but it's it's just a bit of a floppy mess. Uh, you also get yourself a can, uh, which says, I can't quite make that out, Genuine Draft Beer. I kind of wish he had more like bottles and stuff that you could have put into the flying saucer because that I just kind of think of that when I whenever we watch you know Rick and Morty I always see you know tons of bottles and stuff like that. He also comes with a plumbus, or the set comes with a plumbus, and this like little welding gun sort of thing, which really doesn't go anywhere. Uh, the instructions. Let me just take up pick up the set here. The instructions just basically say put it here. And like there's like little extra holes and stuff where if you wanted to move something, say for example, move the beaker, it just unpegs, a little peg there, and we'll just move that out of the way. And then you could just kind of peg them anywhere. So there's some extra, oops, and try not to drop in the process. There's some extra little ways that you can customize it. Some sticker application was applied, some stickers there for the drawers, some stickers down below for the cupboards, which I have to say it was not the easiest to apply because you have to put the stickers on once you build this part here, but you have to tuck the stickers underneath the floor, underneath the floor. I would say if you are building this set for yourself, probably don't put this floor on first, despite what the manual will tell you, put this on first, then put the flooring in front of it. This makes no sense. Uh, but it's a neat looking, it, it is a really neat looking build. You've got the robotic arm on the side here that uh, does rotate, hinges back and forth. And you got like a little light at the back. There's the cord, a little uh, like a bulletin board sort of thing. You got a cork board on the side. Again, lots of really cool things. A lot of it sticker applications. So you've got like the clock and the calendar that had to have some stickers this needs some stickers of course stickers down here and of course the stickers on the very messy uh, boards down below I really did try to get those cupboards on just right but unfortunately mm, just the way that the instructions are they, they literally have you putting the floor pieces down then putting the cupboard back the actual bricks to make the cupboard and then put the stickers on I wouldn't have done that just now that I Hindsight is 2020, or in this case, hindsight is for me like 2010. Apparently, I've got good vision, but uh, I probably would have put the stickers on afterwards, or first and then the floor afterwards. Just a little 411 if you are building the set for yourself. But again, it's like a decent looking. It's a decent looking backdrop. You know, you've got some some extra umph going for it, which I quite like. Then to go along with that, you've got Rick's spaceship car which of the two things were a lot easier to build. And uh, it, I mean, again, it looks really neat. It's got some sticker application there, some bumper stickers and some striped stickers that were applied here. Uh, one of which I actually had to cut off because the length of the sticker didn't match the mold shape of the front panel here. So I applied the sticker and even then I had excess that went over top of the hinge. So I just took, I just cut that part off just because it was excess. But you've got your taped on uh, lights and you got your thrusters on the back, which look pretty neat. A pair of tires, front and back, so the vehicle does roll fairly easy, actually. And then a couple of little things. Uh, one thing I noticed, though, is that the thruster, at least on one side, doesn't really stay attached very easily. It just seems to pop off a lot. This part here opens up, which is kind of neat. And there's the interior. And I didn't actually have to apply stickers to these. Those pieces already had uh, decals on them. So that was good. That was any any bit any bit of time where I don't have to put stickers on, I do like. And again, the tires still move fairly easy. I find like the back tire seems to get a little bit more stuck. Uh, specifically, there goes one of the thrusters. Specifically, this tire here um, gets a little little more on the stuck side. The doors also on the side of the spaceship open up, which is neat. And it, it just has a just a single hinge on either corner, and then the door just hinges on that. The back canopy also opens up. The only area that doesn't open is the front here, 
you could theoretically just take this off if it's in the way. And on the inside, you got your two seats and a little sticker console that had to be applied with a steering wheel. Uh, you can take your figures too, and they don't necessarily peg into place as much as they're supposed to just have these little notches. See these little notches here? They're supposed to fit in between the legs. And it doesn't always hold the figures, I have to admit. But you can take your, your Rick and squeeze him in there. You have to kind of get his legs underneath underneath the steering wheel, which can be a little bit difficult. This is why I said if it's easier for you, you can take the canopy off. In fact, we'll maybe do that right now. Take that off and peg this back into place. There we go. There we go. Take your Rick, fit him very carefully in there. Take your Morty, bend his legs, and fit him in there as well. And I really wish that they do they did attach a little bit better, a little bit more secure. Then you can put your canopy on there. Close your doors. There we go. And close the back. And then you've got Rick and Morty inside the little spaceship, which is really neat. Probably may end up just displaying. You know, even if I don't have all of these on display somewhere in my house. I could see myself probably just having Rick and Morty inside the spaceship because I think that looks really neat. So you got the you got that. Now, if somebody was to ask me, uh, I think actually someone at had asked me, if you take the rack, the garage rack section, does it actually fit in with the 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 rest of the garage? Technically, it doesn't because if like if I'm kind of placing everything to the show. Uh, I think this is more so over here, like that, and then the the opening to the door is over here. So it doesn't it doesn't actually connect necessarily. Like if I was to lay out the room, the garage door would open up, open up here, and you've had you would have had the spaceship, you know, say like right here for example, like that, and then the door would be here, and then like the workshop would be back here. So it doesn't really technically fit all together. I suppose if you wanted to, you could just simply have them displayed side by side, you know, kind of like that, which really isn't 100% accurate. But again, like you could kind of still, for the purpose of having it all on display, you could put the rack just simply next to the workbench area. Overall, this might actually be one of my favorite build sets, not in the scope of how it was built, if anything, that was one of my more frustrating builds, but the end result really looks quite nice. Um, I still kind of question sort of McFarlane's decision making on, on some of these things, like why again do some of these minifigures have rubbery arms and rubbery heads? Why couldn't they have just simply been plastic? The paint quality on some of the figures also somewhat debatable. Like again, just splotches of paint and stuff like that on random places of the figures. Uh, the build sets as a whole are pretty good if you can kind of decipher at times the way that the instructions are made out. But I think once you get past that frustration, they're pretty neat looking sets that you could have on display. Today we were having a look at one of the larger of the sets from the Rick and Morty line. Today we were having a look at the McFarlane Toys Rick and Morty Spaceship and Garage. I exaggerated garage there. If you guys like this video and certainly want to see more videos like this, hit that little like button down below. And also, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe yet to this channel, what are you waiting for? Don't be a Jimmy JJ. Hit that little subscribe button down below and you won't miss a beat when it comes to future videos on this channel. As always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do. I'll see you next time.